Yes. Can we put weight on the vote on the test? Would that be counted as wrong? No, I would not count that wrong. I generally would circle it, circle it and I'd scribble something that looks kind of like an IGN for ignore, which I'm, I'm acknowledging that I'm not taking off for it, I'm just not including it as part of the, the grade. And some students do that uh, at all levels and for different reasons, sometimes just because it annoys them that it's being ignored. Then that's fine. The pulley, since we're here, is an ideal pulley. It's massless and frictionless. If we bring in friction, if the pulley actually turns, then suddenly the problem becomes more complicated. And I don't want to do that to you. In physics, 151 and 251, especially 251, uh, eventually, we remove the frictionless and massless part of it. You get far enough in physics, stretchless goes away as you start to bring more and more reality into it. Whatever lab, if you do the Newton's second law lab, uh, you'll have a string there and you're going to ignore the mass of the string because the mass, in that case, the mass of the string is so tiny compared to the other masses involved in the, in the lab it's easy enough to ignore without much loss. And so that's oftentimes, it's not that A and B are there, but the fact that A and B typically are significantly more massive than the rope, and therefore we can ignore it. Now, if you're designing a bridge, don't ignore it. But presumably you'll have more education than this one class before designing a bridge. Okay, uh, so normal force done. All right, let's talk about tension before we get to friction because friction gets slightly more complicated. Tension acts at the ends of the rope in along the line of it. So I have a tension acting this way and other tension acting this way. Box B is pulling the rope down the ramp, so that's what this force is. And the rope is keeping box B from just sliding down the ramp, so that's what this force is. This is the rope slowing box B down. And that's the tension that is comes from the box pulling on it. Tension is a pulling force, so it pulls on the ends. This is a, do we need subscripts for that? Because that's just the tension, right? All right, so these, if we're gonna do subscripts, those two will have the same subscript. Those are the, the opposite forces because they come in pairs. That's the pair right there. Okay. Uh, let me do the other side here and then let's, I'm gonna talk about subscripts. Yeah. I have a tension pulling down here and a tension pulling up there. If I cut that rope, box A would fall. So that tension is keeping A that's possibly from falling or slowing it from slowing it. This is a pair of forces that go together, that's a pair. And here's the reason for the ideal. One of the reasons for the ideal. With an ideal rope, the tension at each end happens to be the same magnitude. So I can get away with, if I have a single rope, I don't need subscripts. If I have two ropes, then I need to bring in subscripts. If we take away some of the ideal nature of it, if we add friction, we add mass, then these would have a subscript, and these two would have a different subscript. Well, it's just because there's a rope, right? So it would be easier if there was two, then we would need subscripts because there's going to be two ropes. But yeah, they they didn't I, no, I, I understand. I was just, no, I'm good. Okay. And this is one of the reasons why, even though the, the yellow nylon rope or whatever plastic it was, was not ideal, it did have a weight. I can put it on, well, probably not this one because this has had so many things dropped on it, the scale doesn't necessarily read right. But 
when I said that the force along the rope was the same, the tension along the rope was the same, because it's close enough to ideal. It's, it's a small enough mass that it, it's reasonable to assume that the tension is not very different all along the entire yellow rope. And now, of course, oh, the other thing about tension, because the contact. How is the rope attached to box B? Do I have an eye hook and it's hooked in through the eye hook or is it wedged inside the box like this? How is the rope attached to box B? And that's why we call it tension. What did you say? Say it again, Hunter. No, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Andre. Not enough information given. If it's an eye hook, so I got an eye hook screwed into box B and I got the string attached to it, technically that's a normal force. Because I got the hook right here, I got the rope on this side of it, and the normal force is keeping the string from going through the, the hook. If it's wedged in like this, then that force is friction. We don't know, there is indeed not enough information and so this is what we call tension. Some, some people, uh, some instructors have even gone so far as to say, tension doesn't really exist because it's actually one of the other forces. And yeah, but it's sort of a catch all. I've got a tight rope, I'm calling it tension because I don't have any detail about how it's actually connected. And now friction. Which way is box B going to go? So, Andre was saying down. Are they the same width, A and B? They are not the same. Because, um, which box is going to be? Yeah, what difference would it make? Is the friction for B going that way and then on the ramp it's going that way? Not necessarily. Because okay. as Lay said, it does depend upon what the masses are. And actually, the relative masses and this angle also plays a factor. So I did not tell you enough. So on a problem like this, if this were you know, in the realm of the complex problem, I would have to give you more information. So just for the sake of this, let's just assume that it's going to slide this way. That's symbol for velocity. I'm just saying that A is going to fall and B is going to go up. And I've just arbitrarily picked that. So now with this new piece of information, which way is friction acting on B? If I had B going the other way, then they would, the friction would have been the opposite direction. And it is also possible to balance it perfectly so that there's no friction involved. So there's just, just one friction between the box and the ramp? Friction requires contact, and so wherever I have a normal force, I possibly have friction. I have a normal force pair here, and I got a friction pair. The only other place of the normal force is here, and the rope is frictionless. So that's it. So will they treat this up like that? Because I was, I was thinking that the um, was gonna go down. Uh, I, on a test, I would have to tell you. I left, deliberately left it off because I wanted to bring that up as a point. Uh, if I if I gave this to you and I did not say on a test, then usually that's that's a case where I wasn't thinking about it because it was clear in my head what I was doing. And then I'd get about reading through halfway and get, oh, I can't believe they missed it. I can't believe they missed it. And somewhere along the line, I'd go, oh, 
oh yeah, I didn't give enough information. Then I go back to all of them and I go, all right, yeah, that's, and then I get credit either way. If there's multiple interpretations, then uh, because of my oversight, then I get credit for multiple okay. answers. Will they hold friction B on the ramp, but you just label oh. the box for friction? You want me to get rid of the subscript or add the subscript? Yeah. I heard add. <laughs> Thank you. I would have taken all for that. This is a test level problem, what we're about to do. Of the test level problems, I think the minimum number of courses I've ever done has been somewhere around 20, and the most was somewhere around 40. That's not pairs, that's courses. So it could be 10 pairs to 20 pairs. I can't remember what this one is. I want to draw the picture. There is going to have only one foot on the ground there, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Oh. <laughs> now, if you don't like Dad Fooling Boy on sled, uh, you can imagine what my inspiration was. Um, feel free to do Mom Fooling Boy, Dad Fooling Girl, Mom Fooling Girl. <laughs> Amorphous cloth, pulling amorphous cloth. I need to give another piece of information here is that they are accelerating to the right. And so they're moving to the right and accelerating to the right. So you can imagine that they were starting at rest and so now they're picking up speed. So find a marker that's there. So does B means acceleration or was it like another one? A yeah, acceleration and velocity. Um. Now, technically, I call it dad pulling boy on sled. Dad's actually pulling the sled and the boy's on top of the sled. He's not pulling the boy. But that's just the way it is. So the problem would be set up, I'd have text, uh, I might give a context. It snowed that day and I uh, used Edro and Gerog a lot. Gerog had his day off from school and he went out to go sledding with his dad. He's sitting on the sled and the dad is at the dash, rope to the sled and is pulling them. They were having a great time. They are Accelerating, they'll have a picture there. They are accelerating and moving to the right. Draw the force diagram. And then on the next page, I'll have something like this. A 
I do want to do friction last because that's seems to trip most people off here. All right. Can we eliminate anything? I'm guessing no. Other. So, other in or out? And you were saying that you were you were specu you were speculating guessing I think is the word you used that nothing can be thrown out. What would I need to do in order for other to be included? Is the snow potentially going to grow? Is the snow potentially going to grow? Uh, the problem actually does not the force diagram doesn't change whether it's snow or gravel or sand or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, in my image, there's snow. He's on a sled for a reason. If others included, what would I need to have told you? Oh, you would have to um, make it more warm. Would you have to it's not to stay in the context? Yeah, I'd have to throw in this. Now, I might do it. I, I could give a, a location of it there. There's a breeze coming from their back, applying four newtons of force. Oh, okay. You know, the breeze itself is irrelevant, just that there's this four newton force. You could consider that another, or you could draw a breeze. But, but others thrown out because we're ignoring that. There is no wind. All right. Acting which way on what? Sorry, I think I heard, but say it again. I'm saying the weight acting on the baby on the sled. On the baby on the sled. No. Would the boy when he's going down? Oh, it would be. But boy and sled were not part of the same thing. I was thinking that they're like the boy and like just going down. I was thinking you were very actually thinking about normal forces. Okay. So there is a weight acting on the boy. Weight of boy. Where's the other part of that pair? On the sled. Yep. On the ground? Yeah. yeah. Cleverly using B for boy. All right. What else is weight? Is there a weight on on um, the or on his own dad and the ground? Yep. All right. So I got weight on dad. Got to use the other D. Yep. I've got four objects here and the ground. So yeah, each of these potentially has a weight. Now we're gonna make the rope ideal. So there's a weight of sled, and then weight of sled. And that's it. The only other thing that possibly could have weight, and as Kiki mentioned before, we could do weight of rope, but if it's ideal, we don't have to. All right, what else? Weight is done. What is the tension with the rope? Tension with the rope? Okay, which way is the tension acting? On here. Is it the, the dad's hand or no? Is that what the tension we're going with? Tension, tension. It, it is happening. It tension, there is tension because of the dad's hands, but the question is which way to draw it. And I, I think lay pointed in the right direction. So we're right. So from here going, oh, you're going straight to the right. Oh, the diagonal? Yeah, it's always, the tension is along the line. Okay. 
Because this horse is holding, this rope is taut because of the tension in it. And then the other one is the hands is the other piece of that. So I got it, this tension acting this way. I did have an umbrella off to the side here. Um, I think in the original problem, I had the rope like that, and then I had the, the man. <laughs> something like that. And what some students did is they knew it was between the man and the man's hands and the rope. And so they drew the tensions like that. No, the, the tension is along the lines of the rope. If I move this object over here, this arrow is still pointing in that same direction. Because this is physically what's happening right here. This is just where I'm drawing my lines. All right, so we got uh, one pair of tensions. And because it's ideal, we don't need a subscript. And again, if you wanted to put subscripts in here, these two would have a subscript, the same subscript. These two would have a different subscript. We don't have to for a single rope as long as it's ideal. All right, so I have one rope. We took care of both ends. Tension is done. Andre, did you want to throw in another tension? We could just create tension here. <laughs> It's gonna be like Thanksgiving. All right. So, uh, we got normal. Is the normal weight of the sled? Okay. Boy sled. All right. So, boy and sled are touching. Which way is it acting on boy? Boy. And on the sled. 